Hey, happy holidays everybody and welcome back. And today we're going to be looking at how to set up a turbo repo mono repo. And this mono repo is going to include two Next.js projects as well as a uh, node TypeScript backend. And both of these are TypeScript as well. And we're also going to be setting up some shared TypeScript configurations, ESLint configuration, um, some Husky pre-commits, as well as a shared UI library. And all of these will also be using Tailwind. So let's start building it. All right, so ho ho, how do we get this started? You see what I did there? That was pretty good. Um, is we're going to actually go ahead and I already have a empty repository called Turbo Repo Tutorial here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this npx create turbo at latest dot to create the starter pretty much cre um, turbo repo uh, project for us in this current uh, Git repository. So let's go ahead and actually get this started. And we're going to run this command here and uh, just put all of those files in this local uh, repository that I've already created. And what we're going to see here is it's going to actually prompt us with this cool little gradient and then ask us which package manager do we plan on using. I'm going to choose yarn, but you can go ahead and choose NPM. This is going to fail for me because this is actually a repository that I've already gone ahead and been using. So it's just going to kind of go ahead and fail. But the actual creation of the uh, repository files and everything like that will actually be created the same for you. It'll actually go ahead and um, install that correctly. So let's quickly just take a look at what's actually happening with uh, this created repository for us. So it goes ahead and creates a couple of folders for us. And the first folder that we're going to talk about is apps. And so apps is pretty much just whatever the applications that you actually have. So for example, here we have a docs application, which seems to be a Next.js application, as well as web, which I believe is a React application. And you can see that it's kind of just pre-configured with a couple of things. We're not going to go too into details here as we're going to create our own projects. But pretty much what anything that you want to include in apps should just be the actual apps that are being deployed. So servers, app, uh, front end applications, whatever that may be. The next folder that it went ahead and created for us is this packages folder. And this packages folder is pretty much what I like to think of just a bunch of different shared configurations. So for example, in the config project here, we can see that we just have our ESLint uh, preset, as well as the ESLint dependencies being installed in, into this config. And then as well as we're also just including that one file since it's not that big of a project. Then we also have our shared kind of like TypeScript configurations here where we have like a base and then this base is then kind of being extended in this Next.js as well as this React library. And um, we're actually going to go ahead and get rid of this, but just to kind of show you what these things are being built. And again, this is also, it also has its own package.json, which pretty much just has the name of the project as well as the different files. And then um, this shared UI library, which for right now just has this button and it's kind of complaining because you cannot use JSX unless the JSX flag is provided. But we are going to go ahead and fix all of this as we start implementing our own projects. And you can see that for some reason it added a git ignore instead of a dot git ignore. So let's get rid of that. But we pretty much have a um, project wide dot get ignore here. So we're pretty much just going to kind of ignore environment variables, ignore the turbo folder that will be generated for us and everything like this. And then here kind of comes the bread and butter of the uh, turbo repo library. So kind of what's happening here is that we, as you can see, is we are using the uh, yarn workspaces. And if you're not familiar with what yarn workspaces are, it would be a uh, good idea to kind of go ahead and actually um, study up on it a little bit because it does kind of use it quite extensively in um, kind of managing packages and uh, things like that. But if you're not familiar, it's pretty much just a way to set up a package architecture um, for mono repos. And that way you can kind of link your dependencies and kind of share them like that. But it's really cool tech. I had um, never actually had to use yarn workspaces before. So um, it's kind of been fun to learn that while trying to learn uh, turbo repo as well. But pretty much what we can see here is if we look at the root um, package.json, you can see that it creates this name for us and then adds the workspaces. So it adds our two packages. So apps and packages with just a star, meaning that, hey, we're gonna just include anything below these two as a, as a workspace. 
which is cool. And we'll show you kind of what that allows us to do later on with some um, using package or using kind of interfaces or things like that from different apps within another app, which is really cool. Kind of like absolute imports, but um, a little bit cleaner, I think. Um, and then so we also have our scripts here, which we just have like kind of the basic build script, which will just run turbo build dev, which will run turbo uh, dev in parallel lint, which will just lint. And pretty much what these will do is it'll take any um, package or any app under the apps and it'll run their build script, run their dev script, run their lint script, um, run their format script. So pretty cool. Uh, we have a couple of development dependencies here, prettier and turbo. So turbo is just the um, turbo repo library. And then we also have the prettier library to kind of clean things up. And so here's kind of like the, the gabagool of this um, library, the secret sauce, if you would say. And that is this turbo configuration with this pipeline. So pretty much what this pipeline is, is that we're allowed to kind of start specifying um, things that we want to have the different pipelines. So we want to build pipeline, we want a lint pipeline, we want a dev pipeline, we want a test pipeline, we can kind of configure different pipelines. And this is a really powerful tool. And it allows you to also kind of uh, create some depends on so you can have some kind of like hierarchical like make sure you only run this once this is complete so for example maybe you really only want to run tests once the build is complete or you want to deploy once the build and tests are complete so you can kind of set that up so you one thing you could do is something like this so like if we were to take go ahead and kind of just add a deploy script you can see here we'll have like deploy depends on build then test then lint and once these are all successful then we'll actually run the deploy script but for this part of the video, we're actually not going to worry about deploy. So I'm going to go into kind of setting up uh, testing and deployments in part two. But for this one, we're just going to be looking at ESLint, TypeScript, Tailwind, and uh, Husky. So um, cool. So that we kind of understand what's going on here. Cache as false is uh, this is kind of if you're going to be using libraries that use hot reload like Next.js or maybe no demand. Um, you do want to just make sure that your cache is set to false. You don't really want any caching behavior while you're developing. So that's kind of what that does. But let's go ahead and start playing around with the build script and show kind of how a couple of cool things that you can do with um, Turbo Repo. And if you're not familiar with this caret here, so this caret pretty much is saying like, um, let's actually depend on the topological dependencies and dev dependencies to actually build first before we actually build ours. So pretty much what this is saying is like, hey, make sure that all of the dependencies and dev dependencies of the project are actually built first and then run our build script. So that's kind of what this little caret is doing. Here we can see that we're actually outputting our uh, build um, solution to the next folder or a dist folder. So that's kind of just a way to set up some outputs. And you can also just have that empty. For example, maybe you don't want to lint, uh, you don't want to output anything from lint. You could just leave it as empty, or you could also just leave it as an empty object like this. Um, either one, they, I think they do the same thing. So, yeah. So let's open up our um, monitor here, not monitor, the terminal and let's actually just run yarn install first so we're going to go ahead and actually install all of the dependencies that we just um, pretty much created um, with the turbo repo latest so this is going to go ahead and kind of install each package's individual um, node module so like if we go ahead and open this up you can see now that doc has its own version of node module web has its own version of node modules but then we also have a, a root level node modules as well and that's um, kind of how it handles like shared um, dependencies between different projects and um, able to kind of link them to make it so that the mono repo works um, quick. And then if we go ahead and run the build, so now that we've actually installed everything, let's just run yarn build. And again, um, this is just running the turbo run build. You can see that a couple of things start to happen here. And the cool thing is it has kind of this pretty colors as well, but pretty much what it's doing is like it's trying to run the uh, docs application build which we, if we go into our docs application and we look at our uh, package JSON and we look at build here, you can see that all it's doing is just running next build. And then if we go into the web project and we see package here, you can see here that it's also running just next build as well. So they're both just running build. Um, 
And then, so what this is doing though, is that it's looking to see, first of all, hey, does this build already exist? And is there a cache for it? So since we're running it the first time, we're gonna get two cache misses. So what that means is that we're gonna actually go ahead and run the build as if it were a fresh build. And you can see it took a little bit of some time just because it's just a, a brand new build and it pretty much took us 12 seconds. But now that we've actually gone ahead and built those, if we go ahead and run yarn build again, you can see how much faster it is. Now, both projects actually were already cached, their builds were, so it doesn't need to actually rebuild it and Turbo Repo knows this. And then it goes ahead and just builds it and you can see just how much time it really saves you. And um, just to make sure that this is actually working, what we can actually do is if we go into this docs project here, and let's say for example, instead of docs, we just say documentation nerds, which is the, uh, my website that I'm also kind of currently uh, redoing, is uh, you can see that once we save that and go back to here, and let's run yarn build again. One thing that you'll notice is that um, we actually have a cache miss on docs and that's because it, it's able to detect like, hey, the, um, something has changed in this project from the last time you built it. And so we're going to actually get a cache miss and then it's going to go ahead and rebuild it for you. But since we never changed the web project, you can see that it's a cache hit and it's a lot faster. So this pretty much just makes it so um, you're able to cache different builds uh, in your mono repo, which is really nice. And if there's ever a time that you kind of just want to override the um, cache, you could also just run it with this object, um, not object, with this flag called dash dash force. And this will actually make it so that every project or everything, whatever the command that you're running, so for this example, we're running build, will actually uh, skip the cache. So it'll override it and make sure that it's always a fresh install. So um, just to note that as well. Oh, and one more thing, if there's ever a time that you want to run just a single project or um, whatever, may, maybe you want to scope it down to a single project, like build it or something like that, what you could actually do is you could run yarn build, but then you can actually add this scope flag as well. And just do scope is equal to, and then whatever the workspace is. And again, if you're not familiar with yarn workspaces, workspaces are pretty much whatever you define in here. So let's say in our root level, so we have these two workspaces. We have the apps folder and the packages folder. But then the actual name of the workspace is the name of the package JSON right here. And that's why these two are very important. So version is very important as well as name. So got to always make sure that you are mono repo, turbo repo, um, package JSON to have both of these. Cause then now, as you can see, since we have this workspace name of docs, what I could do is I could actually scope it down. So instead of next app, I don't know why I did that. Um, that's coming up in the future. But um, so you can see now, instead of actually running through all of our applications, it only scoped uh, the build command to our docs project. Okay, and with that, we are ready to kind of get started with our building our kind of custom projects as well as setting up some shared configurations between the two Next.js projects that we're gonna create as well as the Node backend server using TypeScript. We're gonna also set up some Tailwind and make sure that everything is uh, working correctly. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So what we're going to do is we have this project, right? And it's gone ahead and created a bunch of stuff for us, but we actually don't want to use any of those apps. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and first of all, just remove the um, apps uh, node modules. And then I'm also going to remove apps slash doc slash node modules, as well as app slash uh, web slash node modules. So let's go ahead and just kind of remove those just to make it easier to remove. And then we're also going to remove docs and app slash web. So let's get rid of those and let's just make sure that those are removed by going down here. Yeah, you can see empty. So now we're ready to start creating our projects. And as another note, if you are, uh, if you clone down the repository and following along, it should be fine. But if you are kind of starting from a scratch um, repository, you should also run git in it if you're um, wanting to kind of go into the Husky part of this tutorial, just to make sure that it's a Husky or not a Husky, a uh, git repository. And so now we're gonna go ahead and start creating our next project. So one of the interesting things is that we actually aren't able to create next projects within the Turbo Repo uh, project. And the reason for that is because create next app is actually going ahead and um, trying to install the dependencies. And um, 
it's kind of an issue so that uh, once you try to actually install the dependency during the create next app process, it will not work because we're using workspaces. And so it kind of expects it to be run in the, in the root. And as you can see, it's kind of just like they have this um, issue with Next.js just to kind of add a skip install option into it. So that way we could actually just from the project Excel itself actually go into apps and just do create next app here. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and create that um, in a uh, different um, folder. And we're going to be using the Next.js project with Tailwind CSS. So in, in case you missed what that command was, it pretty much is just yarn create next app dash dash example with Tailwind CSS. And then it's going to be named with Tailwind CSS app. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to just kind of rename it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is remove Tailwind um, not the node modules that it installed. I'm actually then going to um, take that and rename it as next app. And then I also copy all of those files into um, from next app into our next next app. So the second next app, get it. And then once that's done, we're also just going to go ahead and move um, that next app into present apps. And then we're also going to um, oops, it's not present. It's um, turbo repo tutorial. Yep, there we go. And then we're also going to move next next app into turbo repo tutorial slash apps. Okay, cool. And so now let's move back into our turbo repo tutorial. And if we go ahead and look at this, these are deleted. But if we go into our apps now, you can see that we have our two next JS projects ready to go. And before we get started with anything, we're going to go ahead and actually update their package JSONs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to update these. So as you can see, once a create next app actually doesn't create that name um, for you or the version. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and add those because that's they're important for the workspaces and kind of just show you guys what I'm going to be doing with this project. So you guys have an idea. So we are giving it a name so that this now becomes the next app workspace name. Uh, just version zero, um, not going to be really worrying about versioning right now or at all, honestly, um, private, uh, just set that to true. And then we have a couple of scripts here. So we pretty much have our dev script, we have our build script, just our start script, as well as our test script. And this test script is just going to just echo out, hey, these are the next um, app tests. And then a couple of the dependencies that we have here is we just have next latest react react dom and then here kind of comes the cool thing that you can do with workspaces and so for right now we don't have a server but pretty much what this allows us to do is we can actually take things that are exported from or we can actually start to use server as a kind of uh path URL. So we can actually start importing maybe an interface from server or for example, the shared UI library, we can actually go ahead and import a button from there. And so that's really cool. Um, and then we also have our dev dependencies here, which are just um, node react. It's a couple of things for ESLint. Same thing here. Um, uh, we are able to use our workspaces again. So since we have packages in workspaces, we could actually just define it with this star character. Um, and then we'll have access to our shared configurations as well as our TS configuration. So um, really cool there. And let's go ahead and also do the same for our next next app. So it's going to be exactly the same is this next app. Nope, this is next next app. So then here we're going to actually just do the same. It's going to just use the same dependencies, but the, the name is different because now it's actually the next next app. And so once that's important or not important, but once that's done, let's go back to our terminal and then we can just run yarn install. And what this will do is it'll install all of the dependencies for the individual projects as well as into the root level node modules that uh, is being used. And the interesting thing is if we take an actual look at these node modules, what you'll see is that the node modules for the next app is actually quite a bit smaller. Like we have some like TypeScript configuration things. We have the ESLint, the auto prefixer and things like that. But we don't actually see like a huge list of all of those um, dependencies that we're using. Like where's next, where's react, those things. But if we look at the root level node modules, you can see that in here, um, are we really going to scroll all the way down? I guess so. Uh, we can um, see here that we have next and next app and all of these are available at the root level um, repository node modules. Cool. And now that we've done that, let's go and um, add TypeScript to our projects. And the way that we're going to do that is let's actually showcase how to add uh, individual 
workspaces dependencies. So what we can do is we could use this keyword yarn workspace, and then we choose the name on the package JSON. And what we're gonna add is a couple of dev dependencies. So we're just gonna add TypeScript, Types React, and Types Node. And I believe that these are already in there from what I copied and pasted, but if they weren't, that's just an, ex uh, an example of how to actually add um, some of the direct to package JSONs from a, um, an apps project. So that's a kind of the way you would do that. So just wanted to show you guys uh, the yarn workspace. And so let's just do the same thing for our next next app, just in case that they weren't there. I think they were, but if they weren't, it'll help us out. And then now we're going to start going into the shared TypeScript configuration. So we're going to look at TypeScript first, and then we will go ahead and look at um, ESLint. So let's go into our packages and let's go into TS config here. And what we're going to look at first is this base.json. And if I go ahead and do this, um, what you'll see here is pretty much we just have a display name. So this is our default, and this is going to be kind of shared between all of our different TypeScript configurations. And a couple of things that we have is actually, I'm going to go ahead and paste one that I kind of worked on for this project. And pretty much what this is gonna do is like, we'll have allow JS between all of them. We'll have composite um, declaration, declaration map. This is um, pretty in, a pretty interesting one. I believe this um, is useful for the mono repo kind of um, important for turbo repo to be set this to false. Um, like of course, just force consistent file naming. We'll use the same libs between them. Isolated modules is true. There's a couple of TypeScript stuff. You can also just play around with um, whatever the TypeScript configuration that you personally like. And if you have them that are kind of uh, reusing the couple of different TypeScript configs, you can just add them to this base.json. So just type groups, make sure that it's strict, things like that. And now let's look at the next JS, uh, dot JSON, and I'm going to replace it with, um, since we're going to be using the base JSON between our server and Next.js projects quite a bit, I'm actually going to just replace some of those stuff with just um, a couple of different options. For example, since uh, this is going to differ from the server the TypeScript project that we're going to do, I'm just going to kind of add a couple more compiler options. And then also the include exclude will be different for these different projects. So pretty much we're just going to include the next environment, anything within source. And we're just also going to include the uh, styles globals.css, which pretty much if um, you don't know what those are, it's pretty much just adding these tailwind base, um, which tailwind three seems to do for you. So we'll do that. Then we'll also exclude a couple of different repositories. So for now, just node modules dot next and dot turbo. And then once we've done that, we can actually go ahead and into our individual projects, we're going to then go and um, add the tsconfig.json to them. And what it's going to do is pretty much just going to, as you can see, just extend that tsconfig next.js json, which then also extends the base.json. And then we're also just going to add a couple more compiler options and just be like, hey, no emit, set it to true. And then also make sure that the base URL is um, this local project. And as you can see, create next app also created a yarn.log for the project. So let's actually just go ahead and remove those because um, those are not needed. We only need the root repository one. And then let's create the same thing for this uh, next next app. And if we go to here, copy this, go to next next app and then now we have the same TypeScript configuration for both of our projects and so let's just make sure that everything is still working correctly and so what we're going to do is we're just going to run yarn install again just to make sure there's anything that needs to be installed is installed and then we can just run yarn build and you can see we have our cache misses here it's going to go ahead and run next build kind of going ahead and doing all of that stuff for us and once that's good to go It'll just kind of up output this successful and it seems like everything is still working correctly. And now we have a shared TypeScript configuration with uh, all of our Next.js projects. So then anytime we create another Next.js project, all we really need to do is just extend the Next.js JSON and maybe add a couple of different compiler options if we want to. And another thing that we haven't set up yet is that as you can see, when we go into our next app pages over here, index, um, if I go ahead and uh, actually save this, you can see that it kind of adds a kind of default, uh, prettier, uh, just double quotes, everything added a semicolon. So um, I don't actually want that. I want to kind of set up my own mono repo level, prettier file. So what I could do is just create a prettier rc.json. And we don't need to install anything here because there was actually 
actually installed with our um, with the npx create turbo call. And so then what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna go ahead and add our own prettier. And again, you can add your own prettier configuration here if you want. For me, I personally like this. I like tab width of two, no semicolons, print width, and just a couple of other configurations here. So now if we go back to our next app and we go to pages and then index. Now, if you see, if I click uh, save, it actually follows along with my prettier configuration. And then if I also go to this project, you can see, oh, this one already has it. But if I were to um, change this to next head like this, so double quotes and I save it, you can see now that the prettier is run throughout our entire code base. And that's really cool. Um, so now let's actually go ahead and set up our Node.js backend server. So let's go back to our uh, Turbo Repo tutorial here. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to switch into apps. I'm going to make the server folder. I'm then going to switch into server. And then I'm going to just run npm init dash y. And it'll just create a package JSON with this configuration. So now we have the workspace name of server. And then let's go back to our uh, root level repository. And then let's add TypeScript and node daemon and a couple of other things needed for TypeScript to our, again, um, if you were to quickly see that before it started going crazy, um, the server workspace name. And so now that's all good to go. And let's just actually run yarn install again to make sure that those added files are added to our root level node modules. But if we go into server, you can see here that we have a package JSON. And then we're actually going to play around with this a little bit here. But you can see that we have the TypeScript node demand and types node installed to this package. So let's actually go ahead and uh, modify this package.json. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make it just uh, change a couple of things. So pretty much what we're doing is uh, we added this dev script and this dev script is a little bit different where now we're just going to remove the build project and then we're actually going to run our build project here, which is just the TypeScript compiler. And then we're actually going to then run no demand with the dist source index.js. So we'll do that. And then we also have a couple more uh, dev dependencies that were added. So I think I added express as well as ESLint, and then we added the dependency of Express here. So, and then the reason that I did that was because I'm going to go ahead and actually add a uh, source folder here. And then I'm also going to add within this source folder, just an index.ts. And then in here, I'm just going to add this Express um, and just kind of this basic uh, Express server. And before we get carried away, let's go back and actually set up the server TypeScript configuration. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the tsconfig.json. And then we're going to add this. Oh, this is actually not this right one. That's actually going to be the shared configuration. So as I mentioned before, we can have a bunch of different shared configurations for different types of projects. So here we have this React library one that kind of came with it. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one specifically for server projects. So the way that I do that is I just do server.json. And then I just go ahead and paste this. And to quickly show you guys what this is doing, um, pretty much it's just uh, this display is the name of server. We're extending our base JSON, but then we're adding a couple of different compiler options. So for example, we're going to target ES6. No emit is false. We actually want it to emit our files to the um, dist folder, the module will be here, it will be using common JS source map, it is true, and then just include any TypeScript file as well as exclude uh, node modules. And now that we have that set up, we can go back to our TS config and now actually go ahead and create our server configuration. And so for our server configuration, I think we can actually remove these, we should be able to just have the extend our server.json as well as compiler options of dist here. And this is actually complaining because we don't actually have our include and exclude within this uh, TS configuration. So what we're going to do is for just the sake of simplicity, 
um, I'm going to go ahead into our shared packages here and grab it from our Next.js. So instead of having this include exclude uh, within the Next.js.json, I'm going to actually just include this uh, within the project to kind of uh, get rid of that warning there. So we're going to actually just include and exclude it in, within the uh, project level TS configuration. And I'm sure that there is a way to actually get it set up that you can just have it within the um, kind of the shared the, the, the shared configuration that you are extending from. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and actually just add that to the project itself. So then um, instead of having it within the shared folder here, we are going to then go ahead to our TS config here. And so then same thing here, just include it um, as we go. And with that, I think we are good to go on the TypeScript configurations, but let's also just go ahead and add one more thing um, into our server. And we're just going to add a interface here and let's just name it cool interface.ts. And this interface is just going to be exported as cool interface. And then it's just going to have a Boolean flag just asking, am I cool? We'll keep that within the server. And then um, everything should be good to go. And what we're going to do is actually test that by running yarn install again, um, making sure all of the packages are installed correctly before we actually go ahead and run our yarn build. So let's run yarn build and make sure that everything is working correctly. And now you can see we also have our server um, added to the um, build process of turbo repo. So now you can see that we had a bunch of cache misses since we've actually been playing around with it. And then we had three successful builds. So it built out our next X app, our next app, as well as our server. And those are all good to go. And now let's actually run yarn build again. And now you can see how much faster it is because it actually had three cache hits as all of them had been um, built before. And now that we have TypeScript configured between our different projects with some shared configurations, let's do the same thing, but for ESLint. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and add a couple of ESLint. Uh, let me actually double check because I think they've already been added. But if not, what you can do to add ESLint to a certain workspace is you could just do yarn workspace, whatever the name is, add dash D ESLint. And we'll do that for that project. Um, and it'll be pretty quick just in case I haven't done it, but we'll do it for our next next app as well. And then we'll also add it to our server. And once that's all done, we are going to then um, add our ESLint configuration files that we are the helper plugins and um, kind of style guys that we're going to be using to our actual config packages config uh, project. So um, that's what we're going to be doing in this huge kind of a bunch of words. And we're pretty much just running um, yarn workspace, choose the config and um, config again is just config package.json's name is config. And we then go ahead and add these dependencies. So we're just going to be adding the TypeScript ESLint plugin, TypeScript parser, ESLint config Airbnb, the base one, TypeScript, just a bunch of different ESLint plugins that we're going to be using throughout our mono repo. And since um, we don't actually have to add these to the project itself. We just have to add it to where it's going to be used, which is within the bread and butter, which is the um, configuration ESLint project here. And with that, you can see that we have this ESLint preset that kind of just extends a couple of things, but I'm actually going to go ahead and create my own. So I'm going to create one for uh, our next projects. And we are going to just go ahead and um, export a couple of things in this one. So just to quickly walk over this, we have um, the environment is set up to browser node because it's a next project. We are extending a couple of different um, configurations. So we have the next core web vitals. We have the ESLint recommended, the plugin TypeScript ESLint recommended. Then we have our style guides here with Airbnb. We then also add a couple of different ones with the plugin import and then also prettier. And just to note, you also should make sure that prettier is the last one that's extended here. And then we have our plugins, which is just import and TypeScript ESLint. Then we have a couple of settings. So we just add a couple of root directories for our next folder. We have this import parsers. We're pretty much just going to make sure that we use the TypeScript ESLint parser for TypeScript and TypeScript extension files, JSX files. Um, then we also add, uh, let me just make that. Okay, there you go. We also have the 
um, node import resolver and we're gonna just be adding some extensions here for JavaScript, JSX, TS, TSX files, as well as just the project here. And then we add a couple of rules. So one of the rules that I like to add is that I'm just gonna error whenever there's no console just to kind of show you guys um, what that does later on that just show that it's actually working at a project level. Um, and then we have the, I just wanna make sure that all of our components are actually arrow function named components. We have um, some plugin jest libraries here. So we just wanna make sure that our testing library and jest uh, ESLint plugins are only run on test files. And we'll get back to this in part two of the video when we kind of add jest to our mono repo. And then I also have some ignore patterns, which pretty much just I ignore um, dot js json node modules dot turbo dot next and public to make sure that we're actually not linting those files and this is also important because since we are kind of working in a mono repo we just want to make sure that the it's not linting more than it needs to because then it could actually uh, cause quite a bit of slowdown when trying to save files and now that we have our es lint configuration for next projects let's actually create the one that we want for our server projects and this will be just a little bit different and let's um just quickly walk over this so we just have environment which is noted set to true we extend a couple of different configurations for this one so for example the two biggest differences i think are just airbnb base and airbnb typescript base so this will just make it so that you're using those style guides for not front-end libraries um, we import the same thing with our plugins we also pass in this parser object options with this just the um, project.tsconfig.json. And then we actually pass in pretty much similar um, settings, but we don't actually need to look for TSX. We just need to look for TypeScript files um, and JavaScript files. Make sure that we always try stuff. And similar to the other one, we also just want to make sure that, uh, again, that I think this is not correctly, but we just want to. Uh, only uh, run our jest plugin on test folders or the jest es linting on test files and then we also have our ignore patterns which is also a little bit different so here we're just ignoring any javascript file node modules any dot turbo or our dist folder and one thing that we need to make sure that we do is we actually have to update our package.json so previously we actually included only that eslint preset.json uh, a JS file, but we actually don't want that anymore. So now we want the next uh, file that we just created, but we also want server.js. And we just have to make sure that those are included so that we're able to access them throughout our workspace. And so now that we've done that, we can go ahead and actually just, let's get rid of this guy. And um, what is it? Yeah, that took a while. I don't know why that took so long, um, but yeah. So we just get rid of preset because we don't need it anymore. And now we can go out and start creating our different uh, project ESLint files. And we do want to create one for each uh, at the project level. So we're just going to create .eslint.js for our first next project. And this one is going to be pretty simple. So what we're going to do is we're just going to require that ESLint next. And this will just go ahead and add all of the configurations that we set up in our package config ESLint. So it'll just add all of this to this ESLint. And then we can also go and start doing a couple of um, overrides. So we can override it, just make sure like this is root is true. TS config root directory is this current directory name and project is this current dot slash ts config dot json and let's do the same for our next next app so let's just go here dot add eslintrc.js add that here so it'll also extend the dot next and as i'm sure you know what's going to happen next we're going to do the same for our server project so we can now just do eslint.rc and the only difference here is we're going to actually require our server configuration as opposed to our next configuration so that's kind of shows how you can start sharing these um, different eslint configurations typescript uh, configurations throughout many different um, projects within your mono repo 
And now we should start seeing some linting errors. And the first linting error that we're gonna see is this, um, since the file does not match your project config. And the reason for that is because I actually like to keep all of my folders within a, or at least all of like my pages and components and things like that for front end projects within source. So mm -hmm. I believe if I add that there and we can just kind of quickly show why that's happening. And the reason for that is in our ESLint next configuration, I actually, make sure let me see where is the configuration is it in eslint or is it in ts config i think it might be in ts config and if we look at the project level ts config here you can see i'm only including our um, files under source and now that once we've uh, switched that let's quickly do that for next next app so we don't forget so we'll just create a source folder and then we'll take pages and we'll throw it in there. And um, once we do that, we can now see that we have all of these linting errors, for example, unable to resolve this path. So now we have to go back to, but you can see that here, it's also complaining like, hey, function component is not an arrow. We also get uh, React must be in scope. And these are just kind of um, ESLint errors from all of those packages that we extended. So um, it's cool. So we can see that it's working at the uh, project level. And next thing that we can do is at each package JSON, we actually now, if we want to run the linting at the uh, root level, we actually need to add a lint script for, for each of our different projects. And that lint script is actually just going to be uh, eslint source dash dash fix. So I'm just going to add that to our different projects here. So that was to next app. Let's add it to next next app. And so there we go. And then let's also add it to server. So server package JSON test, let's just add it here. And what this allows us to do now is we can go back to our uh, root level repository and now we should be able to run yarn lint. And just to make sure we actually do have lint here, which will run turbo run lint. And we actually do have a lint uh, pipeline configured so that we're ready to go. And let's just go ahead and see what happens when we run that. So now we have turbo run lint. And you can see that we have a couple of different errors coming up. One, we are linting source, but all of the files in source are actually ignored. And the reason for that is because in our next next app, if you remember, we haven't changed these to TypeScript files. So it's actually not linting anything. It's just linting an empty repository because everything is ignored due to our linting rules. Um, and that's kind of what's causing these um, errors here. So let's just go ahead and fix all of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to just change all of our JavaScript files to um, just quickly just change them to TypeScript so that they can actually be linted. And you can see it's not happy with how things are currently set up. And we're actually going to be able to see that also through the um, running the lint turbo lint at the root repository. So let's change those. So now we have TypeScript, TypeScript there, and I think server should already be TypeScript. Yep. So now let's go back to our uh, complainer here and just run yarn lint at the root level. And you can see now it's running lint on all of our different uh, repositories. And so what we'll see here, and it's kind of hard to read right now, but what you'll see here is that in next app, we kind of come back, we, we have a bunch of linting errors. And if you go into next app, you can see that these errors also are being present here, but our linter is picking it up uh, for us as well at this level. And let's see, does it go to any of the other projects? It does not because that one project is failing. So it doesn't even go to the other one. So let's go ahead and fix these. And so let's modify the index.tsx page. And we'll kind of uh, come back to this uh, in a little bit to kind of discuss what's happening. So let's just get it happy with us first. So we'll modify that here, modify that here. Um, and actually, no, let's not do that. Let's actually go ahead and discuss what's happening. So in case you're following along, you can see what I am doing. So for this app.tsx page, pretty much what I did, I just added some typing here. So I added this app props from next app. And then I also just disabled this uh, no prop spreading. You can also go ahead and in your ESLint rules, just make this turn this off. But for this video, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to disable it here at the line level. 
And let's also look at what I am doing at, on this index page, because this is actually kind of cool. So if you remember before, we actually had these different workspaces added to our package.json. So for example, in the next app, you can see here as one of our project dependencies, I actually have server and UI, which are both different workspaces within our mono repo. And what this allows us to do then is um, once I go to our index.tsx page again, you can see here that I'm actually able to import different components and different um, interfaces or whatever might be exported in those projects within this next project and that's really cool and you can do that with any project within your mono repo just by doing this similarity where we add the um, project into the project's dependency list and you can just add whatever is within your workspace so server for example or ui and again these are the workspace names so your package json named server and then you can actually just give it this wildcard saying like hey this is for our uh, mono repo and that's awesome. So let's close everything else here so we don't get confused where we are. But yeah, so as you can see, we actually are um, importing this interface. We're also importing the button. And then we are just adding kind of this, this simple little uh, yellow box as well as this button. And we will uh, kind of go into what this is doing once we run all of this and have it configured with Tailwind just to make it a little bit uh, easier to understand. So we have all of this nice and ready to go. And let's just go to our uh, next next app and clean this up so that the linting um, doesn't complain anymore. And so this app.tsx is gonna be the exact same as the other one. So it's just going to just add app props, just make it a little bit happier with us and also just disable that rule. And then this one is going to, um, all I'm gonna change here is instead of having it as export as default function, I'm just gonna call it const home is equal to this. And then at the very bottom, I'm just going to export default home. And so just by changing that, um, we should be able to, let's see what now it's complaining. Oh, so now we need React in scope. So what I can do is just import React from React. And then once we do that, now you can see that all those ESLint errors are gone. And I didn't change anything else in here. And it should just be the default create next app homepage with the tailwind example. And now that we've changed those around, let's go to our uh, repository here. And now if we run yarn lint, this should be happy with us. So now we're gonna actually see. So um, the interesting thing is that Turbo Repo will also uh, cache the linting um, outputs. So for example, since uh, server lint was actually successful the first time, it actually cached that uh, value. And so then next time you run yarn lint throughout your mono repo, it actually doesn't try to lint all of your projects. It only changes, or it only lints on the ones that have changed, similar to how build does it. But since these two were um, uh, throwing some errors, we can see that these are both cache misses. But now when we go ahead, you can see that we still have a couple of warnings, but um, nothing else of errors so that everything was successful in this lint run. And another cool thing that Turbo Repo also does is that once it creates this Turbo uh, folder, it actually kind of uh, has this default log for you that it creates based off of the different commands that you run. So for example, here is our, um, let me make this uh, page wrap. So you can see this is kind of like the log for our build for this next next app, as well as what the lint is for next next app. And you, it'll always automatically um, write to this log file based off your last command, which is really cool. And before we confirm that everything is working still, let's go back to our next app. And if you remember in our index.tsx for next app here, I added these uh, buttons from the UI library as well as the interface from the server library. But for right now, I'm actually going to just cancel this out. And that's because we actually haven't gone ahead and uh, integrated Tailwind uh, into our UI library yet. So that'll actually fail. And then the next thing that we need to quickly fix up is this tsconfig json and here you can see that it's going to complain about unable to overwrite the index.d.ts and we can just uh, quickly fix that by going ahead and doing source slash instead of all of our typescript files let's just reload the window and then once that's done let's go and run yarn build from our root level and now we should be able to build all of our different projects successfully as it did um, the first time and then once that's complete we will be able to start the next part which is uh, configuring tailwind for that shared ui uh, packages library 
awesome and everything is set up and configured and able to build so no errors there we are now going to add our tailwind configuration to our shared library and to our um, Next.js library. So what we need to do is we're actually going to first add this uh, next transpile modules to our next app as well as to our next next app. And what this does is pretty much just allows you to kind of, it helps you uh, transpile code from local uh, packages. So pretty much just like a style guide and allows you to kind of transpile uh, projects within your mono repo into the different uh, repositories that you are using them. And the way that we do that is we actually need to, uh, once we've installed those packages and you can confirm that by looking at the dev dependencies, we have next transpile modules. I think that was there before, but just in case it wasn't, we then need to actually create the next.config.js. And then within here, we are going to just use that package, the next transpile modules, to actually uh, transpile our shared UI library. And we can just add UI like this because it knows that this is part of our workspace. So it's again, workspace name. And just to confirm that, you can see if you go to packages, UI, package JSON, name is that of UI. So we need to do that for both of our projects. So let's go back to next app. Let's copy this and let's go to next, next app and then just do next.config.js and save it there. And once that's done, now we're able to transpile our shared library between our two Next.js projects. And then what we'll do after that is we'll go back to our um, terminal here and we're gonna just add our configure tailwind for that shared uh, component library because it doesn't make sense to have a shared component library for our two tailwind projects and then the components are not tailwind itself and once that's set up we can confirm that that is done by going to ui package json so now you can see that we have these different projects here so we have tailwind we also have our post css as well as auto prefixer so let's just go and kind of copy similar things of um that we use in our different uh, Tailwind projects. So we're just gonna add a post CSS config.js and let's go to apps and just copy that one from here. Um, so then we can just add that to our UI library. And so then we'll paste that there, go back here, grab Tailwind config.js here, and then um, go to UI. Then we'll add Tailwind.config.js here paste that in and so now uh, you can see there's content is uh, this but actually that's not true uh, we will just for now just add um, dot slash uh, slash slash so pretty much any js ts jsx or tsx file within here will be uh, included and uh, this is ts config react library and that's not what we want so now we actually want next js um, and i think is that the right name yeah so it should be nextjs.json um, and that'll go away since now we're actually using the nextjs instead of that um, react ts configuration and so include pretty much everything and so then everything tailwind is happy post css is happy and then now let's look and see um, is there any other configurations that tailwind needs and i think it's good to go and to test this, we can just modify the button component here. And so this button before, as you remember, is just a return button of just saying boop. But now let's actually make it a tailwind button. And what we do is we're just gonna make it a button, add some background, a hover effect, and just make it this size. And then now we can go back to our project in our next app here, and we can uncomment this uh, import of the button. And so now we should be able to import button and it's complaining because it's not being used, but it, once we use it, that complaint goes away. And now what we can do is we can actually run all of our projects uh, together by just running yarn dev. And so yarn dev will run them each in parallel. So if you remember in our package JSON, I may not have covered this, um, but, in, as part of our dev script, we're actually specifying the port. So for example, next app will always run on port 3000. Uh, next, next app will run on port 3001. And then I believe for server, I have it set up for uh, running on port 4000. 
Oh, nope, I guess not, but it'll run whatever the default is. Maybe it is port 4000. We can look at the terminal. So here you can see we have running dev in packages, so cache missed. So then what we have though is next app is ready to go and it's running our dev commands. So server is running this and where does server run at though? Oh yeah, so 4,000, it seems to be the default. So if I click this, you can see that we just have our um, server up and running. If I go and I click the, let me go to back to the terminal and let's run next app, which should be localhost 3000. You can see that the issue here is that we actually don't have our tailwind styles. And why is that? And the reason for that is we need to um, actually set up our purging to point to the correct files. And let's change that by going into our in both of our next projects that use Tailwind. And we're going to click uh, Tailwind config here. And you can see uh, the default for it was pages and components. But since I like to use that source folder, it's actually different. Oh, oops, let me just replace everything. So now we got just got to make sure that everything within source that is a uh, JSX TSX file like that is actually content. And then we also need to add our packages library here. And uh, one thing to note is that it works everywhere else with um, kind of with workspaces. But for some reason, when I do a workspace like this, it's actually not able to um, find it and so like the styles for our UI library actually aren't are they're actually being purged so like we're able to import the button but the styles will actually be purged and not used within uh, this application but um, so yeah so let's go and add that here modify this one to make sure that both of those are correct. And one thing that is pretty cool is that um, this also supports hot reload and that's kind of why we have this uh, dev as false, cache as false, because we don't want it to cache, we want it to kind of just reset every time we change something. And so now if we go back to our project, you can see that it's actually here. And this is the button from our shared library. And this is that weird little yellow blob that I created just to show that Tailwind is working. And now if we just change this to 3001, you can see, whoa, but it's just kind of the default Next.js page because I didn't really change anything there, but it's using Tailwind. So um, Tailwind is configured. We're able to create those shared components and use them between uh, our different projects. And so this kind of really shows the power of working with the mono repo and turbo repo. And yeah, it also does support hot reload again. So if I go into the UI library and let's go to this button and let's change it to green, oh, if I can type green 500 and then I go back here and I go to our 3000. You can see it's green, but hover blue. Um, so yeah, hot reload works. Everything is ready there. So let's actually go and stop this because now we're going to add Husky. And if you're not familiar with what Husky is, it's pretty much just a cool tool that allows you to kind of manage uh, how uh, different hooks work with your GitHub repository. So what you can do is you can add different scripts to run against different types of Git hooks. So like a Git hook would be like a pre-commit or um, kind of like a deploy and those kind of, a, or like a commit message uh, would be another one. So let's actually go and add Husky and Lint staged. And if you're not familiar with what Lint staged is, is Lint stage is pretty much, instead of linting all of your files while you run Lint, you could actually run Lint stage and it'll only lint the changed file. So just to kind of save some time. And if you didn't see what that command was, um, let's go back up, uh, there's so much jargon there. Um, pretty much we have yarn add dash D, so make it a dev dependency, dash W, because we actually want to install these in the root package JSON. And if you don't add dash W, it'll actually kind of stop you from doing that. It'll be like, hey, I can see that you're trying to install this into the root uh, repository. Is that sure? Is that something that you actually want to do? And in this case, since we're going to be running this against the root repository, it is. So we do want to add Husky and Lint staged. And we can make sure that those are installed correctly. And by looking at dev dependencies here, we have Husky and Lint staged. And so with that, let's go to, um, we actually need to add one more thing here. And that's going to be ooh, um, our, uh, prepare script and this will then also be run whenever someone clones down the repository what this will do is it'll go and install husky for um, this mono repo and again this has to be a git repository in order for this to work so if it's not this actually will fail and so now once we go back here and we can run yarn prepare what it'll do is it'll run husky and you can see now that husky git hooks is installed and we have this husky folder here 
And then with that, we can actually go and create our um, lint stage configuration first, and then we'll create our uh, pre-commit hook. And the way that I like to add lint stage configuration is I just do it directly in the package JSON so that we don't have another um, like lint stage configuration file. So I just go in here and add it. And just to quite, kind of quickly go over what this is doing, we're pretty much just uh, linting the uh, pretty much our apps since we're going to just be looking. Uh, we're trying to just lint staged on our apps uh, project. Um, another thing we could do is we could also add one for packages, maybe slash UI if we would like that. Um, and let's actually go ahead and do that because, for example, we do actually want to lint staged on our shared um, package library. And so what, if, if we don't add this, this will only look at our apps workspace, but we actually want packages UI and then any kind of file within here. So let's uh, clean this up and make sure it's correct. And then we'll just do the exact same um, command here. And what it'll do is uh, whenever lint stage is run, it'll just run uh, pack, uh, eslint dash dash fix. So let's just add that there um, so that it should actually run uh, linting on our packages folder. And with that set up, let's actually set that Husky um, pre-commit pre hook up. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do it like this. So what we can do is NPS Husky add dot Husky pre-commit script. And then this is what the script is going to be. So we're gonna make sure that we run our test. And then we're also going to run lint staged. So what it'll do is it'll actually go ahead and run test uh, at the turbo repo level so it'll go and run yarn test which will test all of our different repositories and then it'll also run lint stage against the files that are currently um, staged for our git so it'll run against these files here um, and let's test that that is working correctly and one thing we need to do before that is that we actually don't have a test script in the um, the root level repository. So we need to add that. And so pretty much what we're gonna do is just turbo run test and turbo run test. We then also need to define a test pipeline. And so what we're gonna do for now is just, we're just gonna add a empty object here. Um, but later on you could do something like output and then you could do coverage or something like that. But for now, just the simplicity, uh, we could probably go into that in part two uh, when we add actual testing. Let's just run it like this. And then now let's go ahead and first let's make sure that everything is building correctly by running yarn build. And so as you can see, some things changed. So it'll actually uh, be doing a cache miss on some of these and uh, kind of just rebuild it. So it should take that usual 12 seconds. Um, stalling for time, stalling for time, stalling for time. And then there we go. So, and then again, just to make sure that it's actually running correctly with the cache hit, you can see how fast it is next time. And then now what we can do is we can run yarn test to see if it actually is running our test. And if you remember how we uh, set up that, those tests, you can see that we just echo this uh, next, next test, next app tests, server tests, and um, that's pretty much the command that it's running, right? So it's running these echo commands. And then you can see here that the output is actually what it was supposed to echo out. So each thing is running. And then um, if you've noticed up here, you can actually see that tests are also cached. So that just makes that even faster. So this one was pretty cool because we're not actually running tests. But if we were to be running tests and it could detect that the cache was there, now it's even faster. So this is really nice. So like if you don't ever change a, a single project. So like if I don't change the next app and I want to make sure that everything is still working correctly, it'll still run the cached version of those tests. But if it detects that those tests have changed or something has changed within that project, it'll rerun um, the test to make sure that everything is still working correctly. And the last test that we're going to do, and this is kind of cool, full turbo, kind of crazy, super speed. Um, but the last thing that we want to just make sure is like, let's make sure that that commit hook is actually running. So what we're going to do is we're going to git commit dash am to add everything that has been changed. And um, we're going to just do happy holidays as our uh, commit message. And so now if we run git commit here, you can see that it's actually running our pre commit script here. So it's actually running this run test and lint stage. And how do we know that? We know that because here you can see uh, we are going to first run turbo run test, which is the first command running test in six packages. 
you can see that even in here, it's starting to hit the cache as well. And then it echoes out the server tests and everything that we have defined as our test methods within those different projects. And so it says like, okay, this is successful. We're cool there. And so now here, what it'll do is this is the lint stage running. So as you can see, it's starting to prepare different tasks. So it prepares the task to lint all of our apps files. It prepares the tasks to lint all of our UI files. And then it will run ESLint fix as well as prettier write. And prettier write pretty much just makes sure that those JSON files are configured correctly. And if anything is of any issue, um, that's good to go. And you can see it applies the modification, cleans up. There were no linting errors. If it, if there were a lint error, I believe this would fail. And just to prove that, let's just go ahead and go into our project here. And if I just go and add a, um, so this is gonna need a change. Uh, this, how do I do this? I guess I could just do it here. Whoa. So if I add a console log, you can see now that we have this lint error where it actually does not like this because I have the rule um, no console in our TS config. I want to say ES lint config next. I think there should be a no console rule. Yeah, so no console rule is being applied here. Um, and so if now if I go back and let's try to do the same, uh, I guess since this is going to fail, let's just do sad holidays and you can see now it's going to run our test and that's cool and everything worked correctly but it's going to try to run as you can see now it actually exited with an error and the reason for that is because our eslint fix failed um, at the uh, at some level and so then if we wanted to actually debug this then you would run a yarn lint um, and then it would actually tell you like hey this is where it failed and but we know where that is so then we can just re remove that go back and then I don't think there's actually any changes or are there? I guess so. Um, so then now let's get commit um, and then happier holidays. Oh, oops, I did not add anything. Get commit dash am happier holidays. What is happening here? Get let's just root it. Okay. Uh, happier holidays. So let's add those because they are not there for some reason. Um, and there, yeah. So now you can see that there is no errors during our lint stage, and so it does not complain. Uh, one thing I did notice though that it was weird is that um, I think create next app actually adds this dot get ignore, and we don't want dot. It's not a big deal, but we just don't want a dot get ignore at the um, project level. We just want it at the um, mono repo level. So let's just remove those because those are not needed. And cool. And so now that those are done. Um, let's just add those again just to make sure that these are all fine because this is actually the same repository that I will have on GitHub for everybody to go through and look at the final product. Um, but so let's go and then let's just make it the happiest holidays. And again, you could also make these actual commits messages, but just for this, I won't be doing that. And so now we are good. Everything passed. All of our pre-commit hooks are good to go. And our part one of this setup for this turbo repo is complete. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it, it might have helped you guys out. Um, I've always been kind of against model repos, but I guess coming through and seeing how to use Turbo Repo and how useful and how fast it is that you can actually start playing around with all your different projects in one single code base and how uh, it caches and everything like that is kind of changing my mind on it. I've always been of the, the kind of more microservice-y mind where it's like each service should be its own repository but honestly personally now i can see myself using mono repos uh, with turbo repo um, i haven't had a chance to use nx but i've heard it's also pretty cool but yeah this is actually a pretty cool setup i just kind of wanted to show you guys how to do it in case you're also interested in it um, they were again uh, just acquired by vercel so i'm sure that there's going to be plenty of cool stuff coming down the line for this awesome library but i hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it was able to help you guys out if you guys did, please leave a like as well as comment and subscribe. It really helps out the channel a lot. Um, and it also lets me know that I'm doing something right. And if I'm not doing anything right, just let me know as well. I guess that's a good way for me to get feedback. So I appreciate that. Um, and if you are interested and you do enjoy these videos, we also have a Discord server. Um, 
where we kind of just help each other out and discuss different cool programming things as well as like tech topics or like if you ever get stuck on any of my tutorials or anything like that you can just pop yourself over there and um, I'm usually in there kind of throughout the day if I'm not working on anything too hard so I can just help out a little bit better it's a lot a little bit easier to help out in discord as opposed to in the YouTube uh, comment section so uh, just to let you guys know with that and that'll all be in the description below and so I hope you guys enjoyed this and part two will be coming out soon and I'll just be kind of covering testing as well as maybe some CI CD with GitHub Actions with the mono repo style turbo repo. So um, I just have to kind of iron out a couple of things with that. And so look forward to that. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy your holidays and happy new years if I don't see you guys since till then. But um, yeah, happy holidays.